Hello and welcome to Zelda's Medic's first ever RNG Reporter Guide. I am so excited to have finally figured out how to record on my PC and make a guide for you guys. So the first thing I did was make a video on how to find your DS parameters. Um, that's your timer zero, your V count, and your V frame. Um, enjoy! The first thing you want to click on is DS parameters and then select your game type, your language, your DS type, and your MAC address for your DS. This part is basically the same as PPRNG, so if you need extra help, watch my other video. So back over on your DS, you want to make sure that you have one Pokemon in your party that knows Sweet Scent, and actually you can use any part of the game to find out your parameters. Um, some people prefer to use an empty cave so that uh, the the Pokemon ID frames won't fluctuate, but you can use any route, any grass that you want to use um, in the game. I'm actually in the beginning of the game, so in case you guys um, have just started out, um, you can figure out your parameters. Um, in this guide, I will be using Pokecheck to check my IVs and Pokecheck is also incidentally where I got my Oddish with Sweet Scent. So if you can't find a Pokemon that learns Sweet Scent, then um, this is a good alternative. Um, I end up releasing the Pokemon afterwards just because I only need it for this guide. Um, so you want to save in the grass. Uh, you want to make sure you have Pokeballs with you. It's kind of a necessity. Um, then once you've saved, you can go back to your uh, time setting and look at the exact time, what it is right now. Um, I decided to use the minute as a guide. So I'm setting the time on my uh, computer to be a minute exactly after the time um, on my DS. You can see here for the special occasion, I painted my fingernails the same color as my DS. Um, just because I'm so excited to finally be making videos for PC users. And as you can see on the computer, it says it is March third, uh, 23rd, 2013, so that matches. And then for the time, I'm going to go an exact minute before the time I put on the computer. So if you see right there, it says... Um, 15, 37, and 0 seconds. So that's what I'm going to do exact minute after 15, 36. I'm using a timer on my Mac. Um, if you're on a Mac, you, you, you can use Oh My God Timer or you can use Eon Timer on uh, a PC, which I will put a link for in the description. So I have to wait a whole minute for my time to come, but it kind of gives me a chance to explain what I'm doing for some of you new people. Um, before you can actually start RNGing, you have to figure out what your particular settings are for your game. Um, there's something called a timer zero, something called a V count, and something called a V frame. Timer zero is the most important, in my opinion, because especially if you're on black two or white two, like I am in this guide, um, your timer zero will change randomly. Um, and sometimes it's as many as 10 different timer zeros that you can get. But as I'll show you, a lot of times there's one that happens more often than the others, so it's kind of safe to go with that choice. And then when you're RNGing, you can be aware of the fact that you may not hit your timer zero. But you'll see after you get the particular settings down for your game and your DS, you should start to see a pattern in the Pokemon that you're encountering if you're starting the game at the same time every time. Um, what you really want to see is the same Pokemon. Um, once you start getting the same Pokemon continuously, then you know you're on the right track. I like to keep a list of the timer zeros when I'm doing a parameter search, especially for black 2, because there are so many different timer zeros that I could possibly get. So I'm using my sweet scent, and I'm going to catch the first Pokemon that I encounter right after starting the game. Um, an added note, 
you never want to turn your sea gear on when you're doing this. This is a non sea gear RNG, so if you turn on your sea gear, you're going to screw it up. Um, so make sure when you're starting up the screen, make sure that you say no for sea gear and that you're not pressing any buttons when you start up until after the Game Freak cinematic starts. So just to be absolutely clear, I'm going to replay this beginning part. You do not want to press any buttons through the first white screen and the second dark screen with the white letters. After you see the star, it's okay to start pressing X or A. As soon as you see the continue, you want to make sure you hit no for sea gear. Absolutely, you want to make sure you hit no for sea gear. Once the game starts up, you can actually start spamming X because that will open your Pokemon menu as soon as you enter the game. Okay, so I go back to the original recording. Um, this is after I've caught my Pidov. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Pokecheck. I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, it's a way to check your stats of the Pokemon that you catch. Um, it's a way that you can do RNG without using an AR to check IVs and without getting 100 rare candies to level up your Pokemon to level 100 so you can check. Pokecheck can be a little bit hard to figure out if it's the first time you're using it, but they have really good instructions on the main page. So if you just follow those easy steps, you can be on your way to using Pokecheck to check your Pokemon's IVs. Also, it's a really good way to... Um, kind of like showcase your own Pokemon, like if you start getting really into RNG, you can put your Pokemon up there and then you can clone them whenever you want. So if you have friends you want to share them with, you can clone copies. And um, if you want to, you know, like show them off to your friends and all and they're all in one spot, you can do that too. The way Pokecheck works is that you set up your DNS to the, po the Pokecheck DNS. So when you connect to the GTS, it'll, um, automatically, so you can see the DNS right there, it'll automatically decline your Pokemon if you try to deposit it, but instead of depositing it, you can actually see its information on the website. Um, it's pokecheck.org, um, spelled exactly how it sounds, and it's super helpful. So it actually does not matter which Pokemon you search for when you're in the GTS. Uh, it doesn't matter gender, anything, because it's automatically going to decline you if you set up everything right. So I'm going to select my PDOV and um, just start hitting random stuff. And then you'll see the area you're supposed to get. Uh, it should be... Let's see... 13266. Six. That's the proper error that you're supposed to get if um, you did everything right for Pokecheck. So now that I know it's in the database, I can quit out and I can look up at the computer and see the pit of right there with all its IVs and then I can put them into the parameter searcher on RNG Reporter, which I'll show. So I'm going to put in the first pit of that I got, um, the IVs, you can see on the second on the list right there. Um, the first time I tried to record this, I had a little difficulty with the program I was using, and the quality was really bad. So I ended up trying a couple different things, and this one was the best. So um, it was already after I searched for two pit ofs. So I'm going to look for both, and you'll see, I'll like post my list of results for timer zeros. So you can see that I did this more than just twice to get my resulting timer zero. So you can see here my list of timer zeros as my results. Um, I circled 167E because it occurred the most often. Once you have results that you're comfortable with, you can um, type them into the min and max values on the vcount uh, timer zero uh, values that you see kind of in the middle. Um, I don't think I actually did it on this one because this is, had been the second time I had done it, so I think I forgot to type it in into the middle. But once you have it typed in, the values that you think are constant, click send results to profile, and then you'll see this other window pop up. 
Where it says ID and SID, this is where Pokecheck really comes in handy because you can see right there next to my PIDOVs, you can see the um, trainer ID and the secret ID right there. So, and basically once you have those typed in, all you have to do is make a name for your profile and hit OK. And uh, that's it. You're done for your parameters.